It's Wednesday, the 6th of June, 2018, and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV article online, so you don't have to. Coming up on today's show, sales of hybrid cars soar in the UK, and Europe is up against the Asian juggernaut for battery manufacture. But first of all, let's get the Tesla shareholding meeting out the way. It won't be in this podcast because I'm recording this really frustratingly uh, with just a couple of hours to go. Now, the Tesla meeting is going to be at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California, and it starts at 5.30 Eastern, and so... Yeah, that is literally just a little bit too late for me to uh, be staying up into the early hours of the morning here in the UK uh, to write and produce the podcast. So that will all be on tomorrow's show when not only will we have all the news, but by then, in 24 hours' time, uh, some of the uh, reaction will be out there. And we can dig a little bit deeper into it and not just get the uh, the top lines. So that's my positive spin on, on having to wait 24 hours to get into the uh, the shareholder meeting. Now, Elon Musk usually peppers his introduction with updates on company deadlines and goals. We are going to hear about the Model 3. The prediction is we're going to hear lots about the Chinese Gigafactory. Now that the requirements for a joint venture have been removed by the Chinese and Tesla have been holding out for 100% ownership of anything they build in China, unlike all the other car makers that have uh, just bit the bullet, so to speak, and gone in with JVs. Well, Tesla, maybe they knew something, which you would think everyone's intel is going to be pretty good, uh, but they were just holding out. So I wonder if any of the other car makers are thinking, oh man, we should have waited and done it all on our own anyway. No doubt we'll hear, hopefully, about the Chinese plans and the Model 3 production ramp as well. Now, as of the last update we heard from Elon, they were on target to 5,000 Model 3 every single week by the end of Q2. So maybe they're going to hit that uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, The burst rate was going to be 6,000. And a couple of weeks ago, maybe a uh, 10 days or so ago, when I was online and talking about this, and Elon Musk spotted my tweets and responded to it twice, actually, he said in his response to me uh, that they were on target for 6,000. I thought it was the burst rate, but he was pretty optimistic about it. So no doubt we'll have some Model 3 updates uh, as well. Well, you may have read reports over the last couple of days that 23% of Model 3 deposits were being refunded by Tesla. And whilst it is always tempting to report something that is a pretty huge story, I've been looking into the company that made the claims, and I've been trying to understand what their business is and how credible they are uh, without coming at it with any particular view either way any i'm just checking their validity for making those claims and it wasn't simply an attempt for them to get their company name out there and sell their product or service on the back of tesla which we know generates headlines around the world well there's no doubt more people have now heard of the company which is called second measure uh, since they issued that claim of uh, almost a quarter of model 3 deposits being refunded now they base their as far as i know and I hope I'm not doing them a disservice, they base their business model on credit card transaction data to which they have access, and millions of data points. So they were saying that a quarter of those deposits were handed back by Tesla, and that clearly interpreted by many as a very negative story. Before I could finish really digging into them and digging into the claim about their figures, Tesla have responded with a statement, this does not line up with our data. Well, according to The Drive, the spokesperson pointed to Tesla's own first quarter shareholder letter for semi-current reservation figures, which they say were then in excess of 450,000 for the Model 3. In its production press release for the same period, Tesla stated that its net reservations remained stable attributing any customer refunds to delays in production in general and delays in the availability of certain planned options, particularly dual motor, all-wheel drive, and the smaller battery pack. And that was the end of uh, their take on it. So because Tesla is a public company, we know that that information 
has to be honest and true. So digging into why a company would put out this story that 23% of people have cancelled is difficult to get any further than Tesla saying, well, look at our own public statements. It's simply not true. Uh, in casual, casual remarks as well. Either did I spot it on Twitter or something? I thought Elon Musk uh, pointed towards half a million reservation holders now. So not only stable but going up. From what I understand of the their business model at Second Measure, they analyse um, credit card data. So it's a bit like saying, I don't know if I think of a of an equivalent example. It's about like saying Walmart sold four million apples last month. And because we've looked at people's credit card transaction data on Apple buying at Walmart, rather than asking Walmart how many apples were sold in the last month, because that would be the only source that would be credible. So, again, not doing them a disservice. Maybe they've got a fantastic company there with huge insights into consumer data, but Tesla saying, nice try, completely wrong. Well, another milestone reached in solar, according to Tesla. Since 2015, it's installed a worldwide total of a gigawatt hour of energy storage technology that is critical for using renewable energy at scale. Now, for comparison, that's nearly half of the entire amount of energy storage installed globally last year. And this is an article according to Fast Company. As the company's electric car business quickly grows, the energy side of its business is growing even faster, says Fast Company, in what they call their exclusive report. They say the cost of battery storage keeps falling from 2010 to 2016, the price across the industry fell 73%. That's around $1,000 per kilowatt hour, down to $273 per kilowatt hour. By 2020, they say, it may go down to $145 per kilowatt hour. And by 2025, to just under $70 per kilowatt hour. Well, from other statements I've read from Elon, I figured that $100 per kilowatt hour was on the cards even sooner, but that is clearly very sensitive information and closely guarded. Well, the CTO of Tesla, JB, JB Straubel, said this, and I quote, it's at a scale now where it's undeniably making an impact. Uh, We see it as absolutely core to our mission as a company of accelerating sustainability. Electric vehicles, where we started, are one key piece of that puzzle. Uh, They're an enabler for using sustainable energy and transportation, but they need to be linked to an energy generation source. We really want to solve this all the way with a big picture mindset of truly solving the problem, not just providing someone a piece of the solution, and then they have to go and figure out how to charge the car sustainably. The economy of scale, says JB, that we can derive and have derived from building the Model S and the Model X And now the Model 3 at scale is what has allowed us to bring down the cost of energy storage for all these different applications, end quote. Well, moving on, back here in the UK, and Adam Vaughan has been writing in yesterday's Guardian newspaper and website, and he says this, sales of plug-in hybrid cars soared by nearly three quarters year on year last month in May, dramatically outstripping the 3.4% overall growth in new car registrations. Well, Adam's article continues by saying that nearly 4,000 plug-in hybrids, which typically run for about 50 miles on a battery before the combustion engine kicks in, were bought last month up from 2,301 in May last year. Registrations of pure battery electric vehicles, things like the Nissan LEAF, were up by a fifth to 1,099 last month. Now, the numbers are still a small fraction of the total 192,000 cars bought in the month, uh, but all electrified vehicles combined here in the UK, including hybrids, such as the Toyota Prius, took a record market share, it is now up to 5.8%. So let's not do any of the um, comparisons to Norway, where it was over 50% one month and dropped below 50% the next month, but it's still very, very large. 5.8% is still a fantastic number to achieve, and we'll follow the rest of those percentages from North America, uh, Western Europe as well, to see how it matches up. Well, moving to China, and the Chinese electric vehicle giant BYD, that's the company who is in lazy headline 
writer speak is the one funded by warren buffett is uh, looking at launching battery production in europe joining asian rivals trying to cash in on a green car revolution and threatening attempts by brussels to nurture the homegrown industry according to reuters yesterday only sweden's north volts and germany's Terra E have plans for large-scale lithium-ion battery factories in Europe so far, and some leading European car makers have already struck those deals with Asian suppliers setting up in Hungary and Poland. South Korea's LG Chem, Samsung SDI as well, both have European factories due to open soon, while China's GSR Capital... Well, they already produce battery cells here in the UK at the plant that it purchased from Nissan. Of course, however, automakers are having to get on uh, with securing those battery supply contracts and cell supply contracts if they're then going to assemble the batteries themselves uh, before they could make serious investments in their electric plans. Germany's BMW, according to Reuters, uh, is not involved in any European alliance in battery production, while the biggest automaker here, Volkswagen, said it plans to get its batteries from LG Chem's Polish factory, which is opening in 2018 this year. Mercedes maker Daimler has awarded the contract to CATL. Well, let's stay with Daimler, actually, because it's never good when a company has to issue some sort of denial because uh, you wonder where the story came from, you wonder about the validity of the story, but they had to issue a, a rejection of the stories which spread around the internet, uh, saying that they were struggling to deliver on planned launches for their electric EQ sub-brands. Well, Germany's Handelsblatt said that they were facing delays because of battery shortages and technical problems. Uh, the article claimed that delays would mean the EQC, uh, which is the one that you've seen in recent videos, isn't going to be in showrooms now until this time next year, June 2019. However, Daimler said they never specified a launch date for the EQC. Now, that is quite a vague denial. They could say, we are on target for Q3, Q4, but saying, look, we, ne we never told you the date. Is there an implication there that it could be later than we presumed? Uh, Daimler said, we are on target, there are no delays, end quote. But they didn't actually say when we were going to get the EQC in showrooms. Well, heading to Ireland and new petrol stations, supermarkets, car parks could be forced to install charging points for EVs under new proposals being considered by the Irish government. According to the Times, Dennis Norton, the Climate and Environment Minister, said this, and I quote, Charging at home at night is the most cost-efficient and eco-friendly way of charging an electric vehicle. Given the high proportion of homes with driveways and dedicated parking spaces in Ireland... Ireland has a greater capacity for home charging than many other countries, end quote. Well, General Motors plans to launch 10 heavily electrified vehicles in China in the next three years by the end of 2020, and another 10 in the three years between, up until 2023. That's according to GM's China chief, Matt Tsien, who was speaking yesterday on June the 5th. In China, of course, new energy vehicles is the, uh, the catch-all term for things like uh, pure BEV and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and even hydrogen fuel cell vehicles and of course uh, the type of hybrid that is kind of the range extender which is very popular actually in China the e-power that uh, that Nissan for instance have, have come to the market with uh, they've got the engine the battery always drives the electric motors always drive the wheels uh, but it uses the petrol engine as a generator not so much as a range extender we're heading to Finland next, and earlier this week, actually on Monday, Kesko announced it was going to be building a nationwide network of charging points for EVs this year and next. Now, according to the Helsinki Times, the retail conglomerate also revealed it's going to launch a series of projects to develop new mobility services, starting with a car-sharing trial on its premises in seven cities in Finland. Now, Kesko's charging point network will double the number of EV charging points there, as well as making the retail conglomerate one of the leading charge point operators in Finland. The network will also account for a fifth of the national target of building 2,000 charging points by 2020. Now, the charging points they're building are going to be powered by solar panels on the roofs, of the retailers stores a perfect solution and finally 75,000 jobs in the engine and gearbox industry could be at risk according to german trade unions 
Well, the auto industry itself is a pillar of the German economy, with 840,000 jobs in the sector. And EVs are far more simple to construct, of course. Whilst new jobs will be created in things like battery assembly, they say a lot more will be lost. Well, the report by Reuters quotes Volkswagen's top Labour representative, Bernd Osterloch. He says, electric car powertrains have only a sixth, one sixth of the components when compared to combustion, combustion engine variants, which means EVs are assembled far more quickly. Electric cars take 30% less time to assemble than the current passenger vehicles for Volkswagen. Uh, a battery factory requires only one-fifth of the workforce when compared to an engine plant, according to Berndt. Well, once again, we'll get on to the Tesla shareholder meeting tomorrow due to when we record the podcast, couldn't get to it, but there'll be not only all the news, but all the analysis of it as well, and we can dig a little bit deeper. In the meantime, if you want to help me out spreading the word with electric cars, please do share the podcast with anybody who you think might be interested. All the previous ones, if you're interested of discovering what we've been talking about, something you might have missed maybe, well, they're all on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud iHeartRadio podcast, and of course the blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you want to subscribe, well, that'd be cool. You get them first and free and automatically. It would mean a lot if you could take two minutes to rate and review. And if not, no worries, because I know everyone asks and you're busy. And if you have a connected device like an Amazon Echo, you can download the Alexa skill by searching EV News Daily in your Alexa app or your Amazon Prime app. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.